So first, I will go through the a short product overview. The Abgas Knee Simulator is an automated modeling tool to build advanced knee implant simulations based on well-known implant evaluation workflows. For people who are familiar with Abacus, this is the vertical application built upon Abacus CAE, and the, the simulations are based on Abacus Explicit. The Abacus Knee Simulator has two, uh, two interface mode. First is the designer mode, here is the design. This mode is designed for users who are not familiar with Abacus and Abacus CAE. In this mode, only tools that needed for bu to build the Abacus Knee Simulator model is collected in the interface. The second mode is the analyst mode. This mode extends the functionalities of Abacus Knee Simulator by providing all the tools and functionalities available in Abacus CAE. Both modes build upon the same, uh, interfa uh, same model database, and uh, which in uh, ensure a streamlined interchange of models between the designer and the analyst. Switches between the two modes is easy. It's done by a single mouse button or click. For both modes, the Abacus Knee similar functionalities are collected in the AKS panel appeared on the left of the interface. Within the AKS panel, there are two tabs. First is the knee part tab. In this part, the knee implant components are imported into the Abacus Knee Simulator. These components are matched automatically upon import. And specifically, for the insert polymer parts, to ensure accurate contact pressure calculation, we provide a semi-automated uh, hexahedral mesh for the contact area. The second tab is the test suite tab. Here is where the implant components that are imported into Abacus Knee Simulator are selected to be included in implant evaluation workflows. Once the test suite have been created, all the models for the workflow selected are created automatically. And all the user input requests re requested for the uh, specific workflow are collected under one place. That include the output request, user specified simulation option. The user can then submit the simulation and visualize the results within the knee simulator. What the designer will not see in the background is that these models are finalized once the workflow models are submitted. And each of these models include a large number of features that include sections, section assignments, output requests, steps, and a large number of constraints and connectors. Next, we will talk about the workflows in depth about uh, inside Abacus Knee Simulator. The Knee Simulator includes five workflows. They are the contact mechanics workflow, sim uh, simple implant constraint workflow, the tibial femoral constraint workflow, wear simulator, and the basic total knee replacement loading workflow. The contact mechanics for workflow is the analysis of basic contact pressure and area distribution between the femoral and tibial components during a simple knee flexion. Here, I want to highlight that only the knee implant components are included in this workflow. And also, there are functionalities that is common across all different workflows. First is the insert tab insert type. So we, we offer the insert to be modeled as both deformable and rigid body. The reason for providing this option is to have uh, the option to give the user the functionality to be able to run the simulation quickly as rigid body for a quick evaluation, while when they need to have produced accurate contact pressure, they can mod run the simulation as deformable. Here is a, a comparison of the simulation time 
for e each option. So when the simulation is run as rigid for this specific workflow, it took about 30 minutes for Abacus Explicit to complete the analysis. While when we model the insert as deformable, it's taking much smaller increment to guarantee an accurate and stable solution. So it takes uh, 24 CPUs, about four hours, to complete the same analysis as deformable body. Another common option is the platform type. This is referring to the uh, insert on the tibial components. So the platform can be either fixed or rotating, depending on the design you are trying to evaluate. During the analysis, a, com a compressive load is applied on the femur component. And the value can be either a constant value throughout the analysis step, or they can be varied using an amplitude curve. The distribution of the load between the medial and lateral side can be specified by the user using the slider bar. During the analysis, the femur component is flexed to a certain flexion angle specified by the user. Here is the where, where the user specify how much flexion should the, the femur component go through. The first value is the beginning flexion angle, and the last value is the end flexion angle. The number in the middle is the increment that the app knee simulator will provide output to the user. So in this case, the femur component will start from zero degree flexion, goes to 120 degree flexion, and the user will be able to visualize the results at uh, 30, 60, 90, and 120 degree flexion. As the compressive load is applied onto, on the femur component, the other degrees of freedom for the femur component can be either left free or be fixed. Once the, the user is um, satisfied with, with their simulation options and output requests, they can then write the input file and submit the simulation. And the simulation can run either in the background or be submitted to HBCQ using either single or multiple processors. For the contact mechanics workflow, the cost for running a single physical testing is around $14,000, and it takes about four weeks. The cost doesn't really include the cost for constructing the prototype and the automatic power needed for that. It's just for the physical testing itself. While running the evaluation using Abacus Knee Simulator, the user only needs about 10 minutes to set up the model and the simulation runs in within three hours. This, this is done using uh, the value we reported here uh, for uh, analysis that's done using 24 CPUs. The second workflow is the implant constraint workflow. This workflow is the analysis of laxity between the femoral and tibial components in the absence of any soft tissue structures. As compared to the previous work workflow, uh, one additional component that is included in the analysis is the tibial tree component. This is not required to be imported by the user. Instead, it's provided by the Abacus Knee Simulator for output purposes. Here, I like to point out, although the name is the same for input, the flexion angle in this case not only indicates the beginning and end angle and the output angle, it also indicates where the laxity test will be performed. In this case, since I entered a 120 degree interval, the laxity test will be done at zero degree flexion and 120 degree flexion. So if a smaller increment is provided by the user, that means a lot more laxity test will be performed at each interval. A number of laxity tests are, pro are provided for this workflow that include the anterior-posterior displacement laxity test, 
the internal external rotation test, the medial lateral displacement test, and for each laxity test, the load is applied as a boundary condition instead of a, a loading condition. For this workflow, the cost for performing a, sing a single laxity test is around uh, $7,500 and takes roughly four weeks to perform one single test. Well, as you can see, compared with the physical testing, running simulation saves a lot of time and also cost. The third workflow is the tibial femoral constraint workflow. This is the analysis of the laxity, just like the previous workflow. However, in this workflow, the tibial femoral joint with soft tissue representations are included. That include ligaments and bones around the knee joint. And the user can selectively cut ligaments to represent surgical removal of these soft tissues or clinical weakening of some of these soft tissues. Similar to the previous workflow, a number of laxity tests are included in workflow three, and they are the anterior-posterior load, internal-external torque, and valgus varus torque. As you can see here, the load are applied directly instead of displacement. Provided along with all the ligaments is control over the ligament properties. Ligaments are pre-strings in all these simulations. The user can control the amount of pre-string, and the user can also scale the linear stiffness of these ligaments. Although they are not linear, but we provide the scaling for the linear stiffness portion. The bone components in this workflow can be shifted For this specific workflow, because there is cadaver knee joint required for the physical testing, it's hard to come up with the estimation on the cost for physical testing. But what we can say is that these physical testings are so cost and the time prohibitive, it's not really a tool being used as earlier stage evaluation of knee implants. Instead, they could be used as final uh, evaluation on implant designs. So by providing these more complex workflows with Abacus Knee Simulator, we allowed access of these uh, advanced simulations as earlier stage evaluation tool for implant design. The fourth workflow is the wear simulator. It is used to predict wear on the tibial insert over a number of gait cycles. We provide equivalent parameters as in the actual physical wear tester that include the gap distance and the linear stiffness. Two wear algorithms are provided for this workflow that include the more established Archer's Law wear algorithm, which is the isotropic wear. We also provide the latest research results, that, which is the cross shear wear algorithm. Here, the change of direction for the, between the femur and the components in terms of contact slip accelerates the wear between the, uh, the femur and the uh, tibial component. For the wear simulator, because it requires a large number of cycles to be simulated in the physical testing, the cost runs up to $100,000 to run a single test. And the more importantly, it takes a very long time for the wear simulator to complete one round of testing. By running simulations, this analysis can be done very, in a very reasonable amount of time. Finally is the last workflow in Abacus Knee Simulator. This is the most complex workflow. It is the basic total knee replacement loading workflow. This is the analysis of whole joint mechanics during activities of daily living and their basic muscle loaded conditions. 
compared with the tibial femoral constraint workflow, additional uh, muscle and the bone and the soft tissues are included. A number of daily activities are provided as built-in loading conditions that include the gait loading condition, chair rise, deep squat, and step-down loading condition. Provided with the muscle property is, again, the ability for the user to change the print strain and the linear stiffness of the muscle. Again, for the basic total knee replacement loading work, uh, working, uh, workflow, because of a whole joint is required for the physical testing, the time and the cost for running these tests is very prohibitive for design evaluations. So now I will pass along to uh, Dr. Rockheader for a uh, review on the research validations for these workflows. Good morning or afternoon, everybody. Um, just wanted to say a few words about some of the model validation work that's been happening um, in the literature and how some of those are related to the uh, computational framework that we've provided here. Um, next slide, Cheryl. Great, thanks. Um, obviously, for everybody here, model validation is uh, key to our overall success both for our developers as well as for um, the end users. Um, there's a, a host of current literature that shows uh, explicit FE model validation for these types of analyses, and they all include predictions of uh, contact mechanics, uh, which requires, of course, specific material models um, and contact algorithms within Abacus. Um, the contact mechanics work has has been um, well validated in the literature, both for orthopedics as well as a host of other uh, industries, really. So I kind of wanted to concentrate on these second two to talk about um, actually prediction of tibiofemoral and patellofemoral kinematics um, under known dynamic loading conditions, um, as well as wear performance, as these are the two um, uh, probably that we're most interested in at this point. Go ahead uh, with the slide, Cheryl. Thanks. So I, I thought I'd uh, um, highlight a few publications that are um, that are quite relevant. Um, this one is from Knight uh, in Journal of Biomechanics. It is a simulation of the Stanmore Kneewear Simulator. You can see the schematic on the left. It uh, just has the implant components. There's a compressive load, um, a flexion angle, an IE torque, and an AP force. And you can see also the springs, um, anterior and posterior springs, that are representative of the um, physical uh, constraint in the knee simulator. So it's it's a um, forward dynamic or a, a force-controlled simulation, and you measure the IE rotation and the AP displacement resulting. So I just wanted to point out here from one of the figures in the paper um, that they've been able to do a reasonable job in predicting uh, relative AP and IE kinematics when compared to the experiment. Um, in addition to the uh, uh, kinematic uh, performance evaluation, um, they're also looking at the ability to predict where. In this case, this particular paper is uh, uh, just using the Archard's Law uh, but it shows that, uh, at least from this qualitative comparison that we're looking at here, that the wear scar um, for these two uh, implant components was w rel well represented, um, both in terms of the locations as well as in sort of the relative depths of uh, wear on the medial and lateral components. And that's also uh, uh, quantitatively shown here, just in terms of... Uh, uh, where volume or really weight loss um, compared to uh, two stations of the experimental simulator. So I wanted to highlight this paper because it's it's just to be ephemeral, but it it shows um, prediction of both kinematics as well as um, relative wear um, uh, simultaneously. So there's there's a host of other literature that um, 
is out there that shows um, kinematic validation also, some for just uh, uh, just tibiofemoral, some for both tibiofemoral and patellofemoral uh, simultaneously, um, coming from a, um, a few different groups. Um, next slide, please. I thought I'd highlight just a, a couple of these. Um, this is from a, a, a Canadian group. It basically shows an explicit fine element model um, of a knee simulator um, rig, sort of a, a more lower limb type rig. And this took the next step to uh, predict simultaneously both um, kinematics for the uh, uh, patellofemoral joint as well as the tibiofemoral joint. And you can see on the right some comparisons of uh, kinematic predictions um, with the experimental cadaveric uh, measurements, and you can see um, reasonable model validation there. And from uh, from my group here in Denver, there uh, is a recent publication comparing some of our um, whole joint knee kinematic predictions with those um, produced experimentally in a in a wear simulator. So you see in each of these different flexion angle figures um, uh, the uh, experimental simulator uh, representation uh, as well as the um, uh, relative positions and uh, next slide thank you um, and we've basically shown that you can do a uh, very effective job of predicting both tibiofemoral and patellofemoral kinematics with this known well-controlled dynamic loading condition um, so I just wanted to show a few of these um, so that people are aware of the type of literature uh, that's out there currently and the, and the type of validation associated with these types of models. Um, we obviously have a uh, commitment to ongoing model validation when, whenever, wherever, uh, really it's available through, um, hopefully through collaborative work uh, with some customers and available experimental data. Thank you, Paul. So now, before we start the actual product demonstration, I just want to go through the step-by-step -step on using Epic Knee Simulator to set up these advanced knee implant evaluation workflows. First, the user import knee implant components, then create test suite, which is a repository of workflows. Next, we provide the tools for the user to check for interference. The reason for doing that is because the analysis was executed using Abacus Explicit. Abacus Explicit may run into issues if there are initial interference between the components. So we'll provide that tool to check for interference and uh, highlight any surfaces that are having interference. Then the user are given the tools to adjust instant position, positioning if need necessary. Then the user go through the workflow definition that include define output requests, set the simulation options, run the simulation and monitor its progress, then visualize the results. So next is the demonstration of Epicene Simulator. Uh, we had issues running the live demonstration along uh, through WebEx, so instead of showing it live, we will be uh, showing a video of the demonstration, and I will uh, talk through the demonstration. Abacus Knee Simulator always starts from the designer view, designer mode, and the user have the option to either create a new database or open an existing database. In this case, because I need to show the realization of the analysis results, so I selected to choose opening an existing database. So once the database is opened, the user can look at the uh, interface mode of the knee, uh, knee simulator. So go through the knee parts tab and the test suite tab, which is the repository of either implant components or test suite. To import a femur component, I just click on the femurs. There are different sources supported by Abacus Knee Simulator that include the, um, the neutral file, CAE model or CAD interfaces. In this case, we chose the neutral file. And the user can select to choose either a left or right knee component. 
So all the anatomies inside Dutin abacus knee simulator belong to a right knee. So in the case of uh, a left knee being imported, the implant component will be just mirrored to represent a right knee component. A number of neutral files supported. The user can give a description of the components imported. Next, uh, the knee simulator asks for a few landmarks on the implant components. So for each implant during import, different uh, landmarks are requested. So these landmarks are needed for both meshing the components and also aligning the components in the assembly. First is the uh, plane on the femur components. Next, we ask for the two dual points on the femur components. I know that different companies may refer to these landmarks using different names. So what the dual points in, in, in reality are are the like lowest point on the femur components when it's in its uh, designed vertical location. So if we drop a ball in, on, side that, on that surface, the two points should be the, the, the location where the balls will settle eventually. The user can either pick this point from the screen or they can enter the coordinates. So now the femur component has been imported and you can see the mesh is um, uh, generated automatically. Next, we import a tibia component. Again, different files and different uh, landmarks are provided. So the user need to pick a plane that's uh, parallel to transverse plane. Here, instead of picking the points from the screen, we enter the coordinates of the two dual points and the tibia components just to show different options. Next, uh, the GUI asks for whether the user would like to continue with the geometry and meshing operations. The reason we provided this option is just in case you, you are importing a part that has been already meshed. In that case, you can skip this step. So here, uh, this is the semi-automated tool we provide to generate the hexahedral mesh for the contact area. The first thing that uh, you, you have, you'll be prompt for is the axis that's uh, representing the global knee axis. In this case, the, which should be the, the Z axis. So this will be the axis we use to generate the ellipses used for the positioning. Now you can see the ellipses are generated, and we provide the tools to control the, min, uh, the minor and major axis of these ellipses. And the idea is to have the ellipses as big as possible to, con uh, to cover all potential contact area, and again, to, uh, uh, but at the same time, to avoid any interference with the external edges of the implant. Next is partition and mesh. A mixed mesh will be generated automatically with hexahedral mesh in the contact area and the tetrahedral mesh for the rest. Next, we import the patella button component. Again, one planar landmark is required and the two uh, landmarks points on the patella button, one on the medial edge and one on the curved surface. Again, the user can either mesh in abacus knee simulator or just skip this for a uh, part has already been meshed. So once the in implant parts have been imported successfully, they will have a green check mark next to them in the knee part tree. The user can choose to edit the surface and landmark points if they happen to pick the wrong surface or the wrong points. And they can also swap the dual points if they mistakenly enter the, the lateral side for the medial side, they can do it here. And also they can create sets and surfaces for output here. 
So if the user chooses to create sets and surface in the Neat Parts tab, those sets of, and surfaces are automatically generated for all the workflows. Later on, you will find that in each workflow, the user can also create surface or sets, but in that case, all the surface and sets will be available only for that workflow. Here we use the, the tools available in Abacus CAU to pick surfaces by angle. And now we switch the analyst view just to show how the other functionalities in Abacus CAU can be used in combination with Abacus New Simulator. So once the uh, neat parts have been imported into Apex Neat Simulator. They will all appear under the Neat Sim Dash Parts model. So this is, like I mentioned, this is back in the analyst view. As soon as the user change to another module inside the, the analyst view, they will have access to the model tree. So again, in the Neat Sim Dash Parts model is where all the parts and material reside. You can see the parts I have just imported, all the surfaces and sets created. Abacus Knee Simulator provides a few material models as built-in materials, but the user can always create their own materials based on material test data. And this is a demonstration on how to do that, on how those materials can be used by Abacus Knee Simulator. In this case, we will create a drug program plasticity model, which has been used um, a lot in uh, modeling the polymer insert. So the beauty model is a simple elastic material. So now we create a drug program model. As I mentioned, since the Abacus Knee Simulator uses Abacus Explicit as a solver, we require the user to provide the mass density for each material. Enter the elastic property. Here, I just want to mention that uh, Abacus Knee Simulator, because it has the built-in geometry and the materials for the soft tissues, we do have a built-in unit system. It is uh, the um, SI unit, so the force will be in Newton, the pressure and modulus will be megapascal, and uh, the lens unit will be millimeter. Jacob progress uh, plasticity. Also, because the simulator uses Abacus Explicit Solver, uh, we recommend the user to enter a damping, especially alpha damping, uh, for the, each material they define. And what we found is that uh, 100 uh, alpha damping is a reasonable number to use for most polymer material. This is to remove any uh, noises in the solution. Now we now we go back to the knee simulator uh, designer mode by first going back to the knee simulator module and then click on the designer icon. Now we're back to the beginning uh, of, uh, of the demonstration where the, the interface mode is. 
Next, we, we demonstrate how a test suite can be created. Simple click on Add Test Suite, gave this suite, uh, test suite a name. So the existing test suites were created by one of our interns, and she arranged things by workflows. So she had only one workflow for each test suite she created, but uh, you can do it in each, any way you like. So you can either arrange by workflow or you just arrange by design. So here you can see the material model we just created in the analyst mode can has been populated in the drop down menu and can be selected for uh, the implant parts. So this is we, what one way we envision how the analysts work with the designers. The analysts will create these advanced nonlinear could be viscoelastic material models for the polymer, while the designer just pick whatever the material the analysts recommend them to use. And the user can select which workflows to be included. So for the TBO femur constraint workflow, because we have representation of the uh, soft tissue, the user can select to either represent the soft tissue as 1D element or 2D element. Similarly, for the basic total knee replacement loading work, uh, workflow, they can choose the modeling space for the ligaments. And also, for the quadri step, they can model them either as a single bundle or multiple bundle. And in this case, we chose the simplest uh, option so that the models will be generated in a reasonable amount of time. So this is the real time. I, I didn't speed up anything. You see how quickly these models are generated and the, the implants are assembled and positioned in the assembly along with all the soft tissue and hard tissue provided for each workflow. And the, at the bottom you see all the features have been generated for each workflow. Now we have the workflow generated. The user can go ahead and uh, review each workflow. To do a femoral constraint, wear simulator, to do knee replacement. All the workflow models have been generated. And next, by right click on the workflow, the user can access the interference check. Now, because there are interference between the two components I imported, they are highlighted. Next, I go back to the test suite, right click on the parts, and I have the tools to move these parts around. So in this case, I just translated the femur components uh, along the Z direction by one millimeter. And now I, I went back and I checked for interference again to make sure that the, the interference has indeed been removed. Now I don't see any interference, so I can go ahead with the simulation options. So now to demonstrate, uh, each workflow has different output requests and simulation options, but the uh, general concept is quite similar. So we decided to demonstrate uh, the most complex workflow for this uh, webinar. So basic total knee replacement workflow output request. A common option for all different workflows is the where the output need to be um, provided. So for sets, the user can select the pre previously defined sets. Uh, if they haven't de um, defined these sets, they can create these sets by click on this little icon on the right. And also, they can create surfaces on the fly. As I mentioned, these surfaces are, and sets are only available for the specific workflow where they created. While for uh, these sets and surfaces created at the need parts level, they will be accessible for all workflows. There are various output variables provided for each workflow. For um, more complex workflow, that will be both muscle output, ligament output, and all contact output. While for more uh, the simpler workflows, uh, there will be mostly contact outputs and uh, force constraint type of output in instead. And for some outputs, there are options to choose output to different sets and surfaces. 
Under simulation options, common options include deformable or rigid op, uh, insert, deformable rigid button, and the user can choose to uh, have the rotating platform and pick the center of rotation. The user can select which ligaments to be cut, and they can use the control button to select multiple ones, or the shift uh, button to select a number of them. A number of tests included for each of these tests, um, the, the loads are applied as default, and uh, the user can choose to plot these uh, built-in loading conditions. And you can see how different they are from uh, one loading condition to another. And they can also uh, edit these uh, load data uh, using their own either kinematic study or test measurement data needed for this uh, specific activity. Next, we, we uh, demonstrate uh, the virilization part of these uh, workflows. So we use an existing workflow that has been executed uh, by one of our interns here. And uh, she has picked specific uh, simulation options output requests for me. And uh, when we click on result options, the ODB will be populated. The user can choose which result they would like to see in which area to be plotted against time of flexion, and they can choose uh, whether they want to plot the XY plot. In the case of XY plot, they can also choose to report the XY plot to a text file. They can also create a contour plot for specific output. In this case, it's the contact pressure. And uh, they can realize the progression of contact pressure or any uh, contour outputs uh, over time using the animation button. They can control which components are being showed. In this case, we have all the components uh, viewed in the, in the viewer and uh, play the animation again to see how the flexion is um, executed during the analysis. And uh, another tool is, uh, is a special tool we created for knee simulator is called uh, plot the trajectory. So the user can pick any point, any moving point on the implant components or, or any ligaments or bone parts. They can pick any points here and uh, the knee simulator will pr uh, plot the trajectory of this point during the analysis. So in this case, I picked uh, a point close to the dual point and the femur components, and the uh, knee simulator plotted out how this node moved over the flexion uh, range specified. And this uh, trajectory plot can be used uh, to study how the, uh, to quantify how the uh, components have been moving a specific point where the point have been and they can look at different views of the trajectory. And they can also delete this trajectory from a virilization. Next, we move on to the virilization of the basic total knee replacement workflow. Uh, in this case, is uh, there are more output variables uh, available for different loading conditions. In this case, I choose the muscle, muscle output, plot the force over the gait cycle, and I pick the, the patella ligament. Then the outputs over time, over the gait cycle for this uh, specific lig ligament is plotted. You can also realize uh, contour plots of, for example, accumulated contact patch. Um, this output, again, is created specific for the knee simulator. Instead of uh, contact pressure for one single frame, this is the summation of contact pressure over the entire loading cycle. The reason for providing this output is just to give a visual on where the points have, have been uh, participating in contact and uh, which indicates where uh, the wear on the polymer part will be.
and the user can um, go back to the analyst view to have access to more uh, visualization tools. In this case, um, I showed how different steps and uh, output variables can be selected to be plotted. Uh, instead of uh, the uh, contact output, I choose the stress output for the components and how it's progressed over um, the gate cycle. And we can see how it's being uh, developed, the, con uh, the stress is being developed on the insert. And uh, as I saw this result for the first time, I noticed that there was some uh, lifting at the end of uh, the skate cycle uh, on the medial side. As you see here, the medial side no longer has any stress at the end of simulation. So I suspect there was some simulation options that, that uh, triggered this, uh, this behavior. So I look at uh, the assembly of the models and um, to realize, since th in this case, the ligaments and tendons are uh, mostly represented at, at 1D, so I had to realize the connector to be able to show where the ligaments and tendons are. So to access that, I went to the view, um, view options, ODB options, and uh, by turn on the displays of uh, all the connectors, which is uh, the elements used for modeling these um, uh, ligaments and tendons. So as you can see, the, the MCL is not really in the model. So I suspect the intern has, um, has cut that ligament. Uh, so to check that, it's really easy. I, I, I just went back to, um, to the knee simulator in this case, and uh, I I could choose to go back to designer view. Actually, I could I could stay in analyst view. I could still check um, what the simulation options she has uh, used. In this case, uh, indeed, she has uh, turned off the the MCL from the model. So that concludes uh, the demonstration.